No, when he goes into the first song, you can click here. Good morning, Terry. A little bit lower. Little Happy bit lower. Sunday and welcome yeah. to worship. We're going to click that service. and then do his. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now Thomas you got it. I see some new faces. Since we have the rest of it, let's just close the media bit so, so we don't. We will have some yeah. more of our church coming in. We'll turn it from Bible study and such. But I just want to make y'all welcome. We have our refreshments over here. And, and I just want to start off this morning a little bit different than we usually do. But a couple weeks ago, there was a few things got up there. Somebody, I'm not sure what they got up there. We got a few different prayer cards for different situations. And my friend, Mr. Robert, can't be this one. And he said that, that the Lord spoke and said that this might be the prayer card for this morning. So if you all would please join me in prayer, we will let this happen. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, descend on us. Yes, the Holy Spirit, move. Put us in the cleft of the rock, Jesus, to behold the real thing, your glory. Mm -hmm. We have seen shades and images of it, your glory, in sunsets, and butterflies, and in new babies. But we yearn for the real thing. You are rich in glory and honor. Mm -hmm. Yours is the only lasting glory. As the world's glory fades, yours only gets brighter. And it is in Jesus that we shall know and see your glory. Yes, and amen. As we go from one to the other to the next. Amen. Amen. And there are more prayer cards on that back table that are interested in this graph. But this time, would you please rise and get ready to worship? Careful not to drag it. 
You may be seated. Let me get it. No, 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 no. Good morning, church. My name is Robert Kovar. It's so good. It's so good to see each and every one of you here. Just a few announcements this morning before we uh, get started here. Um, yeah. I just wanted to pray for Eric over here that he would find a home. Uh, he's trying to get into an apartment and some stuff over here. And, and I just wanted to lift him up and, and, and have God make a way where there appears to be no way. We know that that's what God can do. And so I just want to pray for that here this day. Uh, also want to uh, let everyone know that we're going to have a work day. You guys may have seen some plants and things that are around. Some of them have tape on it and other things like that. So February the 3rd, if you would like to come up here and help us uh, re-landscape the church, that would be awesome. So anybody that's got any skills of any kind, it doesn't even matter. Come on up and uh, help us. Uh, prep for spring. Prep, prepping for spring. We're prepping for spring. We'll There you go. We're going to prep for spring when we plant some other things when we stop freezing and stuff like that. <laughs> All right, I'm going to have uh, Pastor Troy come up, and he's uh, got some exciting things that he wants to tell us about what's happening with youth in our church and what's happening with youth around Blanco. Good morning, church family. It's good to see you here. You can be anywhere, but you're here with us. Oh, amen, amen. Well, some exciting things. Uh, this week, uh, we are going to be uh, making a little mission trip to, to Mexico, and uh, youth will be happening. So Monday nights, creative night, uh, that young group has been growing. It's been exciting to be there on Mondays and uh, making music and working on uh, scripts and all kinds of cool things. Wednesday night will be youth from 4 to 6 is the elementary theater. Costumes came in last week. We did a sort of a run through and uh, the Bible study there. We are offering anybody that would like to host uh, a meal on a Wednesday night for the kids instead of us having to order pizza. Uh, some of the folks have been bringing some pretty yummy stuff. So if you feel uh, that you'd be led to do so, just get in touch with me or uh, with Sophia. And then uh, 6 o'clock to 730 will be Bible study with the, uh, the, young, uh, the high school students. All right, back to you, Rob. All right, just uh, one, one other quick thing here before I call Pastor Carlos up. Uh, Pastor Rick is, is going to be preaching today, and uh, he asked me to pull this prayer key out, and it's titled, Prayers for People You Do Not Want to Pray For. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, I, I opened this up, I started going through some of those, and went, I don't want to pray for them, I don't even like them. So, when Pastor Rick comes up here and starts preaching, he's probably going to be asking us about this particular prayer key, and uh, it's oh, not God. easy, uh, but it's what God's yeah. so to do. So, hey, let's welcome Pastor Carlos up now, who's going to lead us in our time of prayer, and let's give him a big applause, because he's just amazing. <laughs>
church, and this is this is something, and, and I know Rick's going to be preaching here today. The truth of the matter is, uh, you know, you can say that you have faith in Jesus, but if you don't have the love of Jesus, the faith that you have is not full. Well, You've got to be willing to forgive. You've got to be willing to forgive. We have to forgive each other. We need to be. We need to share the love of Jesus with people, and there may be people you don't like. Well, let's be honest. There are some people you like and some people you don't like. Uh, but if we don't, if they can't feel the love of Jesus in you, then, then we really need to make adjustments. Okay? And that's my prayer, um, that, we, that we learn to do that. Um, uh, because that's the greatest, the greatest weapon that we have. Uh, I hate to say it, it's not the scripture. Scripture is the sword of the spirit, and we need the scripture. But love never fails. So if we don't have love, biblically based love, we, then we're just not, we're not doing it right. So keep that in mind, and I'm not going to preach it. Uh, we have Rick come and preach for us today. So, uh, but as far as uh, prayer concerns, uh, thank you for praying for Chris. Uh, she had COVID, uh, and she's, man, she's sounding great, and she's, uh, I actually got to see her. I used to, she was at the lake house, and I'd trade goodie bags and drop them off. You know, it's just kind of like, leper, leper. No, but I didn't know if she was saying I was a leper or she was. But whatever. Um, yeah, she's back. She's back. She's, she's all, all bandaged up, but she's back. She's wearing gloves and everything. It's just so funny. You know, how does someone recover? She's got masks and gloves walking around the home. But, uh, but let's, uh, let's pray for all those. Uh, Rick is going to be preaching today, and he got bronchitis a couple days ago. And uh, right now, he's duct taped together and, and uh, steroided and, and all sorts of magic stuff. I don't know what Dr. Weaver's selling, but it's weird. <laughs> and, uh, and so uh, he actually he drinks decaf, and he actually drank caffeinated coffee today. So I can't guarantee what's going to happen here. So. <laughs> Uh, but it's probably more caffeine than the Holy Ghost. <laughs> so, hope not, yes. So let's pray for all those with respiratory problems and issues. And we have bunches of cough drops in the back of the game, okay? So let's pray for them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Okay, um, other concerns. Hey, listen, we need to continue to be praying for the Baptist Church. Uh, Gary Cousins, and, and they, Gary and Angela lost their, their oldest son, Evan. The funeral will be 5 o'clock this Wednesday at First Baptist Church, and we need to surround them in prayers, okay? I know you've been doing it, but at least, let's just stand strong uh, for, for the family, and, and uh, uh, especially mama, you know, and let's not forget their kids, uh, his uh, brothers and sisters, but uh, let's, let's lift up the cousins' family. Lord, in your mercy. Uh, and... Um, Help me, help me out, church. Who else do we need to be praying for? Oh, Troy, Troy Bates. Troy Bates had surgery done. He got out. Everything went well. Uh, we'll see. He has a little electrical thing, component put in there for control of his back pain. Uh, but he had broken pipes, and he's trying to fix the pipes while tearing out the staples. Uh, that's why they should have used duct tape. <laughs> so, uh, but let's, let's pray. Uh, for Troy Bates uh, and for Jody. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Who else do we need to pray for today that, that needs our... Yes, sir, I see you up there. My mom. Is your mom Ellen? Let's pray for Monique. Pray for God's healing on her. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Who else? Are we all here? Yes, ma'am.
what's your grandmother's name? Billie Jean. Billie Jean, let's pray for Billie Jean and for your mom, Shan's mom, uh, and Karen's caretaking. But you know, it's uh, so awesome to be at peace, to be ready to go to see Jesus. Um, I have a pastor friend said he was with his mom, and uh, he thought she slipped out. And he looked at her and also choked her eyes. She said, oh, you, I was expecting Jesus. Ask someone who's right. <laughs> you! I love Jesus! Okay, now well, let's pray for, for Billy, Jean, Billy Jean and for the, uh, just the rest of the family as they surround us. Lord, in your mercy! Who else? What else? We're all good? Co weather is good? Okay. Okay. Next motion.
God's going to use all of us to show up his glory. And it's really so simple, is would you simply be nice? <laughs> would you do something to help somebody out and do it because Jesus loves you? You do it like that, that's the best witness you got. And I'll tell you what, that's the kind of fishing. I'm wearing my fishing shirt because Greg's going to be preaching about fishing. So I'm not going to steal any more of his thunder by talking about fishing, although I caught one that big. But uh, anything else we need to pray about? Okay. Well, let's, let's pray, okay? Lord Jesus, <laughs> we're here because of you. Uh, Lord, uh, we're reminded over and over again that we know the truth, that we don't deserve anything, but you love us. Somehow you love us. You created us. You called us into being. Uh, you're the one who's faithful and true. And Lord, our, our confidence is not in our faithfulness, but in yours. Help us to remember that when we look at that cross, we can remember what you spoke on that cross when you said it is finished. And we realize that the price has been paid in full. You took our guilt, our shame, the condemnation that was due to us. You took it upon yourself and you paid the price and said it's finished. But then we also remember, Lord God, it's not just finished that we got to take it. A take it to heaven. No, it's so much more. You now cause your Holy Spirit to come and live in us. You, you empower us. We, we walk with you. We, we have a relationship with the living God who's going to be our strength when we're struggling with COVID and cold weather, when we struggle with family and friends and neighbors, and we struggle with people that irritate and, and maybe circumstances that come against us, or the doctor tells us we something we don't want to hear. And yet somehow we have a God who is our strength, our peace, and a spiritual resource that we need. When we're feeling hopeless. And, and, and Lord, we thank you that you work in our lives even when we're kind of acting more like bozos than Christians. And, and you use people that have messed up to show forth your glory. Lord, here, we're here to, vol to volunteer to be, to be on your poster of invitation to a world that needs to see the difference that you can make in someone's life who needed help. And we thank you also, Lord God, that you invite us to be part of your ministry in this world, to, to share the love of Jesus, just to invite somebody to a closer walk. Remind us, Lord God, that the greatest sermon that we could ever preach is just being nice and kind in your name, to make a tangible difference by simply helping to be in the hands and feet of Jesus and to show your love before we even tell you, tell them about you. But then when we share, that they would see that something's authentic, something's real. So we pray, Lord Jesus, that you would empower your church to be about the business of the church, not building up a denomination or a religious structure, but by introducing people to you. Letting people know that they are loved. Help us to be part of your agency of transformation in this world. We pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Okay, church, our praise team is up here. They're going to lead us in praise and worship and just keep in mind, we have caffeine, we have cough drops, we have cookies, we have what you need. Feel free to move around, um, and let's just allow the presence of Jesus to be felt here. Would you start off standing? You can sit down anytime you want. Let's just start off standing. This one's for all of those walls and giants that we're facing. You know, instead of throwing fear or throwing profanity, let's throw some praise at it. Thank you. 
slide around.
for one of our loved ones. Lord God, we know. We know where we're going. But Lord God, may this understanding and awareness of our mortality just make it that much more present for our life here on earth to be efficient. To bring people to you, Lord. You didn't send us to earth so that we could be comfortable. Although we will revel in the blessings that you've given for us, Lord. But it's not all that we pray. So prepare us. Lord God, we are all yours. Take our hearts. Take my heart. Take my life and may it be used to bring more to you. We praise you for your beauty, for your glory. We just ask for anointing over the rest of this service, an anointing over Pastor Rick and his words, your words, that are about to fill this room in our hearts and our lives. Have your way. All of this in your gracious name. Jesus. Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch, 
for a catch. Simon answered and said, Master, we worked hard all night and caught nothing, but I will do as you say, and he let down the nets. When they had done this, they enclosed a great quantity of fish, and their nets began to break. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat for them to come and help them. And they came and filled both of the boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw that, he fell down at Jesus' feet, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For amazement had seized him and all his companions because of the catch of fish with that which they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not fear, from now on you will be catching men. When they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. This is the word of our Lord. Thank you, God. And now, Pastor Rick. And now I knock over everything on the table. I thought I was supposed to knock everything over on the table. <laughs> you are a gentleman of a Hope you'll uh, indulge me. I need to have some water close by. Morning, church. Good morning. I hope all of you have had a marvelous week. Um, some of my week was marvelous, some of it wasn't so much fun. But wasn't Monday fun? You walk outside and you go, what knucklehead left the freezer open? So we didn't walk outside. And then Tuesday, it was, what, marginally warm? And we stayed inside. Because the trash guy said they weren't coming until Wednesday this week. So I didn't have any reason to go outside. Wednesday came along and seemed like a much nicer day. I had a nuclear stress test in Fredericksburg. And I know some of you remember the few weeks ago I thought I'd had a heart issue. Now, I've, I've had a triple bypass and I got a few stents in my heart. So when my heart feels weird, I get worried. So uh, Dr. Green, uh, who works over here with, with Dr. Weaver when he's here in town, uh, set me up with a nuclear stress test. And if you're not familiar with that, that's a real fun time. They inject you with a glow-in-the-dark stuff. And then they have you get on the treadmill and they run your back end off. And I'm an old guy and it doesn't work so well anymore. And then they put you back on the machine, they take pictures of your heart. The good news was, I read the report, nothing's wrong with my heart. And you want to talk about, I'm gonna give you a testimony, folks. My prayer, was that there wouldn't be anything new if I am tired of supporting my cardiologist habits of going to Disney World and other places, among other things. And, and there was nothing new. And I'm so grateful to God for that. Uh, and folks, if you, you, you may have to think much about something like that. But it's important to recognize what that is. When you get that kind of report, it's important to recognize what it is and where it came from. And stand up and tell somebody about it. It's also been an interesting week because then on Thursday I started feeling lousy, and on Friday I, Dr. Weaver's this, this, this assistant Tom diagnosed me with bronchitis. And I'm feeling better. Yesterday, actually, they you know, loaded me up with drugs, and yesterday I was feeling pretty good. But then I screwed up my steroids and my albuterol, and last night my heart rate didn't drop below 100 until about 4 o'clock this morning, and sleep was a non-starter for me last night. So if I, if I doze off up here, would y'all wake me up, please? It'd be really embarrassing. But I gotta tell you a, a, a story this morning that I hope touches all of you. I have this wonderful son-in-law. His name is Ben Lohman. Ben is pastor at the Harvest Methodist Church in Missouri City, which is a, about a two, 3,000 member church. Doing great. 
great preacher, great teacher, great pastor. Um, I didn't tell the other services, but uh, when my daughter, Ruth, first called me and reminded me that it was, she's an Aggie and it was ring day, so they're getting their senior rings, and well, they're Aggie rings, I'm sorry, they're not senior rings, they're Aggie rings. And that she wanted to be sure that Joyce and I were coming up to College Station to celebrate that event with her. And in the midst of telling me all this, she says, and you can meet Ben? Well, okay, the dad radar went, <coughs> who's Ben? Oh, well, we've been dating for a while, and I think we're getting a little serious. I think it's time on that. I said, so tell me about Ben. Well, he's an Aggie. Okay, that's good. That's, that's a great start right there. He's kind of a baby Christian, but it has really, really taken a hold of his life. And he's to the point where he is teaching Bible studies. Okay, that's, that's really awesome. He said, um, he's bigger than you. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, he, he played offensive line here for a year. I said, probably bigger than me. And folks, you'll meet him one day. And when you do, you'll know what I'm talking about when I say that when he hugs me, he picks me up off the floor. I said, okay, so, so far everything is good. And she says, and Dad, maybe the most important thing for you is that he loves blazing saddles. <laughs> okay, folks, you don't know this. That is my favorite movie of all time. I said, well, sweetie, you can marry that boy. You don't find that kind of quality anywhere else. Ben is an amazing outdoor sportsman. He hunts. He fishes. His office at the church is the only pastor's office I know that has fish and deer and soon-to-be zebra on the walls. And as soon as they get through processing this zebra that he shot in South Africa last year, he'll have a zebra head and a zebra rug. Among, I don't even remember everything else he took. He's, he's a big hunter. He's also a big fisherman. And he loves to fish. In fact, for Ben... A bad day fishing is better than a good day working. I know a lot of people who are like that. But more on, on his skill in a little while. Uh, you may not know, but I know a little bit about fishing too. Very, very little. When I was growing up, my parents had built a house in Jamaica Beach on the west end of Galveston Island. And, and we would go down there on weekends and we'd spend a good bit of summers there. Um, and we had a canal going out into the, in our, a pier that went out into our canal. And I went out there and I fished. I love to drop a line in the water and fish. I never caught anything. I'd pull in a weed every once in a while. And my baby sister came out. She threw her line out there and reeled in a three-pound redfish. I'm like, well, um, we were fishing in the exact same spot. I'm not sure what's up with that. But I'd occasionally catch something. And then Dad had put us in the boat. We go out in Galveston Bay and be out on Caronquil Reef, which is just north of Jamaica Beach, and we'd be fishing. And I'd be catching weeds, occasionally a little bitty fish, and then more often than not, a, a hammerhead shark. None of which we needed, so everything I caught went back in the bay. But I still like going fishing. And my dad and I, We'd go out fishing, and, and sometimes in the wintertime, we'd go down to the oyster reef, and we'd be bringing our own oysters in. But then I found out that there were girls my age in Jamaica Beach, and who needs fishing after that? Well, fast forward to 2015, after Ben and Ruth had been married for a couple of years, I was pastoring at Wallace United Methodist Church, and I asked Ben to take me fishing. Now, he had seen my skill at fishing at a, a 4th of July church picnic at one of the members' houses. <coughs> and if I cough, just forgive me. Where you had the option of catching a catfish for your lunch or having a hamburger. I liked mine medium rare. 
But he took me to Lake Somerville, we got in his boat, and out we went on the lake to fish. And I actually caught something. So believe me when I tell you, I know about fishing. And the most important thing I know about fishing is this. You can't catch anything if you don't let a hook. Stop wishing and go fishing. Preach. Is, a, is, is a phrase you hear from people like Ben. You can't catch anything sitting on your couch. Unless you're like some people that have couches on the side of their pier or stuff, but that doesn't count. You've got to go out to the water and put that hook in the water to bring fish. Today's scripture, we find Jesus on the, lake, on, on the shore of Lake Gennesaret, which is the Sea of Galilee, for those of you who may not have known that, with a crowd pressing in around him. Now, you know, Jesus has become quite the popular teacher, and crowds followed him everywhere he went to the point that he could hardly escape from them. And here he is on the, on the shore of the lake, and this crowd is just coming like this, and he knows he needs something, he has something to say. But he's got to get away from them to do it. So he walks over, he climbs into Simon's boat. He doesn't say, by your leave, Captain, may I come aboard? He just gets in the boat and says, take me out there so I can preach. Now Simon knew who he was. It's not like he didn't know who Jesus was. And so Jesus and Simon went out a little bit from the shore. Jesus taught. And he looked at Simon when he was finished and he said, let's go fishing. Go out into the deeper part of the lake, and cast your nets. Simon says, we've been fishing all night. We haven't caught a thing. But if you say so, here we go. So he went out in the middle of the lake, cast his net over the side, and it got so full he couldn't pull it in. He had to have help. He got so full it took another boat full of people to pull the nets in. They were nearly sinking. <coughs> so many fish. And Simon, who was so astonished at all this, falls at Jesus' feet and says, Lord, go away from me. I am a sinful man. They were all amazed at the count of the number of fish they caught. And Jesus says to him, Simon, all of you, don't be afraid. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Let's, let's talk about what that means. It's really not all that different from being a fisherman or fisherwoman or fisher person. It really isn't. You, you've got to have the right tools. You've got to get out of your easy chair. You've got to get out of your pew. And you've got to go fishing. And just like going for fishing for fish, uh, you have to be intentional. You have to be intentional about talking to people about Christ. In Luke 14, 23, it says, Go out into the highways and along the hedges and compel them. <coughs> excuse, me. <coughs> excuse me. To come to my house so to come so my house will be filled. Did you get that? Go out and compel them to come in so my house will be filled. I want, to, I want you to think about something. What if each one of you went out this week and found a fish and invited that fish to come to worship with you next Sunday? And some of you had to stand up for church because there was nowhere left to sit. Now, would anybody be upset about that? Would that hurt anybody's feeling? Oh, they're in my favorite seat. This is what we're being instructed to do, to go out and bring them in. Well, when you go fishing, real fishing, you got to have something, to, you got to have tools. You gotta have a rod and a reel and a line and a hook. You gotta have bait. You gotta have the right equipment. Fish are compelled 
to go after bait because that's how they eat. It's in their genetics. Well, man isn't all that different. Man is desperately seeking bait. It's no different when you're fishing for men than it is when you're fishing for fish. You have to have your tackle box filled with the right stuff. That's faith, hope, prayer, love, compassion. How many of you have ever been to a Bass Pro Shop, Richie, or a Cabela's? How many of you are fisher persons, people, whatever? You go to Bass Pro Shop to drool on the counters and buy the latest and greatest stuff to catch fish or hunt, whatever, don't you? No, when Ben asks for gifts, it's, how about a Bass Pro gift shop, gift card? Well, how big a boat do you need this time? How big a new, how, how much does this new rod and reel you want? People go to Bass Pro Shop to restock their, their tackle box. Church is a lot like Bass Pro Shop. It's where we come to be restocked. Think about that. We come in here to get the necessary equipment and tools to go on a fishing trip. And it's a fishing trip that we can take every day. And folks, we have a non-expiring license. It's not like the one I have from Texas Parks and Wildlife I have to renew every August. This one never expires. And it's, well, it will. When Jesus comes back, it will. Until then, it doesn't expire. There is no expiration date printed in here. And you know something? You come in, you get your tackle box filled up, and you're ready to go, right? Are you, are you ready to jump out there and go catch some fish? No, because you have the right bait. When I was a kid, we, we always do shrimp when we go out in the bay. Because sea fish, you know, the, the, the fish that swim in the bays and the oceans, they like shrimp. I don't know if the fish that live over here would care for shrimp, but the ones down in Galveston loved it. But for bass, when Ben take, takes me fishing, bass or crappie, we, we use per and perch, we use lures generally. You've got to have the right bait. And it matters what bait you use to catch people. Friends, young people don't respond to the same thing that us seasoned folks respond to. My wife likes to remind me that at the Sugarland Methodist Church, they have this great organization called the Seasoned Citizens of Sugarland. To be admitted to this crew, I think you have to be over 65, and they are truly some of the neatest people you'll ever meet. But it makes it, it makes it season. Our, our son reminded me the other day that on his birthday this year, he's going to be 40. He likes to remind me of that because he says, Dad, you're 30 years older than me. I'm like, yeah, and this week I'm feeling 130 years older than you. But folks, younger people don't respond to the same thing that us seasoned folks respond to. And we have to know what we're fishing for and who we're, who we're fishing with and to. Fishing for men is no different than fishing for fish. Live bait tends to be best. Even the river fish and the lake fish prefer live bait. If you're fishing bait, would you raise your hand? All right, come on, everybody here is fishing bait. Everybody here is bait. Did you know that? Did you, did anybody ever called you bait before? In most contexts, in our setting, it's probably best not to be. Live bait is best, by far. And your actions and your compassion and your genuine Christian love are the best bait you can use. Paul said it best in 1 Corinthians 
chapter 9, verses 19 through 22. And I'm going to use my New Living Translation. I don't know if that's what they have on the, on the screen. But listen to what Paul said. <clears throat> Even though I am a free man with no master, I have become a slave to all people to bring many to Christ. When I was with the Jews, I lived like a Jew to bring the Jews to Christ. When I was with those who followed the Jewish law, I too lived under that law, even though I am not subject to the law. I did this so I could bring to Christ those who are under the law. When I am with the Gentiles who do not follow Jewish law, I too live apart from that law so I can bring them to Christ. But I do not ignore the law of God. I obey the law of Christ. When I am with those who are weak, I share their weakness, for I want to bring the weak to Christ. Yes, I try to find common ground with everyone, doing everything I can to save some. I do everything to spread the good news and share in its blessings. As I was preparing the sermon, that verse really kind of smacked me upside the head and made me ask myself, am I doing that? Is this what I'm doing? And the reason I asked Robert to, to focus on prayers for people you do not want to pray for. Because this is one way. When you know somebody you don't like, anybody know anybody you don't like? If you if you if you like everybody you know, please see me after church. I I really like to know what your secret is. If you tell them, you know, we might disagree on a lot of things. We might not like each other, but I pray for you every day. You think that's going to make a difference in somebody's life? Maybe it will, maybe it won't. You are not the final arbiter of that. But to pray for somebody you don't like <laughs> takes a level of compassion that no one else can meet. <clears throat> the lure, the bait, has to be so appealing to others that they willingly take it. A couple of lifelong buddies named Tom and Chad went ice fishing in Colorado. Now, have any of you ever ice fished? Interesting stuff, isn't it? I have seen Minnesota, I got sure. I have, I have a client in Duluth, Minnesota. Uh, and normally my visits up there are spring or, or summer, so I, I just jokingly said to him one day, I would. I'd love to come up here and see the largest freshwater body of, or fresh body of water on the planet frozen over. But normally I'm here in the spring or the fall, so I probably will never see that. <coughs> Early January, about five years ago, hey, what's up? Um, we just got sold, and you need to come do a security audit to meet the requirements that the Coast Guard puts on us. I said, when? He said, Next week. Uh, folks, I don't have wet cl cold uh, clothes for cold weather that's in the minus, minuses. But I said, okay. Now, I had to go to St. Louis first. I was at a client's office or facility there on the Mississippi River. It was six degrees on the river. And the wind was blowing. I thought, can't get any worse. Mm. Minus 18. Got off the plane, took a breath, and wanted to run back inside the plane. First stop, Dick's Sporting Goods. Get one of those big face mask thingies, more stuff to cover my head, and ears, more gloves. But I got to see people ice fishing because we flew over a bunch of them. Because Lake Superior was frozen 26 miles out into the lake. And there are people who will drive trucks on ice to go dig holes in it and catch fish. I'm not sure they're all that well. But they catch fish and they seem to love them. So anyway, Tom and Chad had gone ice fishing in Colorado and after arriving at the lake very early in the morning,
morning. They, they got out of their truck. They drilled their holes. They, they probably put their little shelter over them and dropped their lines in the water. And they were fishing for a few hours, and, and Tom noticed that Chad had caught a lot of fish, and he hadn't had a bite. So he said, Chad, what's your secret? And Chad says, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Tom says, what did you say? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Tom again asks, what? And Chad spit something out of his mouth into his hand and said, you got to keep the worms warm. <laughs> Somewhere there's supposed to be a picture of my son-in-law up there. There he is. He's the guy in the yellow fishing vestments. He and some of his buddies went fishing at Lake Somerville. There was a 25 fish limit. Now let me tell you what I told you about Ben a little while ago. He knows how to fish. These were two guys that I think, three guys, if I remember correctly, were members of his church when he was a church pastor, pastor at Pass in the United Methodist Church. In a 25 fish limit, they finished fishing in an hour. The challenge for us is to be like Ben and know where to fish and know what bait to use. Are you catching anything when you go fishing? Jesus knew where the fish were, didn't he? He said, go to deeper water. Drop your nets and there you'll find them. We need to be just like Jesus. We need to know where to go fishing. And we have to be intentional. <coughs> Excuse me about going out in the deeper water. We need to be deeper in the Word of God and study the Bible every day. Folks, when I came here, before we, before we did the pastor thing and I got ordained again and all that, and all the time I pastored before, I was not a heavy-duty Bible study guy. I, I apologize to God a million times for that. I studied what I needed to know to write a sermon, which is a terrible thing to admit, but it's the truth. And I'm sure that I'm not the only one that studies the Bible like that or studied the Bible like that. <coughs> but since I got here, I'm doing three Bible studies a day right now. One, one specifically dealing with Hebrew word of the day. Thank you, Pastor. <coughs> for getting me interested enough in Hebrew to dig back into it. You've got to be a student of the Bible. Now, the thing I found about this church is that I hear folks all the time who I know have been studying the Bible since they were wee lads. And you know what a blessing that is to a church? But folks, we need to be studying the Bible every day. We need to be deeper in our prayer life. Before we moved, when Joyce and I would get to go to bed, I would reach, I started reaching over and taking her hand and praying every night. When I'm not at home, it feels really empty. Last night she came to bed an hour after I did, and I thought I was going to go to sleep, but medicine and other things change that. I, I couldn't wait for her to come to bed, so I could just reach over and hold her hand and pray. Now, we are trying in this congregation to improve and increase our prayer life. Now, we've got some visions. Pastor Carlos has got some marvelous vision of how we can improve and increase our prayer lives, and I hope all of you will be part of that. I truly believe it will change a congregation that's already changing for the better. We need to be deeper in our love and our compassion, showing others that we, we love them regardless of whether we like them or what their situation or circumstances are in life. How many of, you, how many of us seasoned folks in the room have children for whom it has been difficult to love, who have been difficult to love at times? Raise your hand. It's okay. 
How many of you younger parents have children who can be difficult to love at times? They're kids. I was probably difficult to love. I guess my dad would tell me one day I was difficult at times. Thank you. He was more difficult and I always lost. But we have to be deeper in our love, deeper in our compassion. Or people will ignore us. We, they, don't, they, they think we don't care. We have to be deeper in our walk with Christ. If you cannot say to yourself and to the Lord every day, I want to be more like you and I want to be with you. That more like you should have been the last song we sing today probably, but it's okay. I didn't tell you that until just then, so I, I got to tell you, um, Sebastian and the praise team absolutely rock. And I, you know, I think that's the right thing. You know, I come in here, I, when I started coming here, I have not been a big fan of contemporary worship services. I like pipe organs, I like choirs. And do, we do have a magnificent, small but mighty choir. But you guys and the fellow over there in the corner have really changed how I feel about what we call contemporary worship. And I thank you for that. And I thank the praise team for that. And I thank Carlos for it. This gives me the opportunity to, to have some great discussions with folks. But we need to be deeper in our, in our walk with Christ. Uh, we need to be deeper in our faith and grow closer to Christ every day. The question you have to ask yourself is this. Are you catching anything? If you're not catching anything, why? You know how you find out and you pray about it and say, God, what am I not doing? Why can't I be like Ben and his friends? who live it out in an hour. I want to be more like people who are so in love with Jesus that when I meet somebody new, they know right then that I'm in love with Jesus and He is my Lord and Savior and I want to tell you about it. So folks, check your tackle box and see what's in it. See what tools are there See what maybe needs to be improved. This Bass Pro Shop, this Bass Pro Shop is open. We have the most unusual hours of any Bass Pro Shop. And the senior management of this Bass Pro Shop never closes. 24-7, 365, for 10 million years never closes. Jesus said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Let Jesus equip you. Let him be your fishing guide so you can be like that guy. I love going fishing with Ben because I'm almost guaranteed at least get a bite. may never catch another fish, but at least I get a bite. Let Jesus be your guide. And there's a P.S. to this message. I think that, uh, you know, the time, as, as, as was said a few minutes ago, the time may be short. We don't have any way of knowing. And we are responsible for catching a lot of fish. But the thing to remember is this. It's catch and release. We catch them. Jesus cleans them. And then they move right back in to the living water where they stay forever. I don't mind letting those fish go. In fact, it's a blessing to let them go. Folks, let's go fish. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
trying, trying, trying.
Yes, Lord. God bless you. Amen. Stay warm. Amen. 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 